one of the ways in which these uh, these conversations point us towards, in, in terms of the kind of concerns you've been raising in various kinds of ways, is what what I would call a relocalization of the internet, or actually a hyperlocalization of the kinds of the ways in which internet layers in, uh, contribute to our daily life in 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 our in in our physical worlds and and so on. And I wonder maybe. Um, Stephen or Sean, you might want to say something a bit more about that. It's interesting that I talk about relocalizing, and I think that's because I had a sense that it was once local, um, whereas for many people it's never been local. It's always been something global and amorphous. Um, and I was really struck by um, Rosanna's um, account of the way that people use Instagram and just how tiring it can be, exhausting being not, not just hyper-local but hyper-visible on somebody else's platform. And my sense when I talk about um, relocalising is how, how do we imagine that we might gain some sense of local agency or control? Now, now there are debates about whether that means the infrastructure itself. There are risks that we, you know, we fall into Trump territory and we, 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 we create images of building walls around Bristol that mean that we can't communicate with Bath or with cities further afield because we've developed our own way of doing things. But I'm, I'm less interested in that. I'm more interested in how do we imagine that all of this you know, potential that exists within within the internet can be primarily focused towards local value and local benefit. How do we redesign our maps so that they make sense to local people? How do we find people within our local area that have got the same sort of interests or, or, or challenges? How do we how do we use all of that to create some sort of ownership? And I think it's less, if I'm honest, about the technology. I think the apps and the platforms. Um, certainly through the pandemic, um, have been used in a very hyper-local way. But it's about recognising that that, that sort of um, requirement for some, some coordination, some strategy at a local level, some assets, o- opening up the, the assets within a neighbourhood to enable these things to flourish more easily isn't something that we've done. And that's why I talk about um, not just localising, but, but moving the shift from the centre to the edge because we've got to recognise that, the, the, you know, the real power for change is coming from the neighbourhoods and the communities. And that's that's where we need to think about digital placemaking in some ways, although it's got challenges at the moment, the centre will take care of itself. But I think this is where the experience of the, you know, the pandemic and the experience we've been living through has shown really interesting examples because, you know, I'm always interested in how people use technologies in ways that wasn't all always designed for, originally designed for, and people bend it and twist it to their own needs. And I think with the situation with lockdown has shown how people have been using technology, particular at times of need for their own ends. So, you know, I've attended, for example, a certain amount of funeral on this time you know through zoom through youtube through you know whatsapp all these kind of experiences you know one in america one in barbados and that's just been really interesting to me how you know these moments of need have really made people step up and that's where we often see innovation happens when it is those moments of need um that you know how people have been dealing with you know births during this time as well as then the other things which actually look Look more maybe frivolous or more luxurious so early lockdown there's lots of family quizzes there's people starting to complain to me how oh I've got another family meeting tonight and you know uh, you know and that kind of thing but actually they were going there they were doing these quizzes they're meeting up and actually they said that they're meeting up with family members they hadn't seen for you know 20 years or so you know siblings that have had fractured relationships all of a sudden are sat in the same zoom room and they're starting to engage in a really interesting way so for me actually some of those things like the quizzes might look like it's actually look, look you know just uh luxurious or just entertainment but actually there are elements of need there because by situations of relationship or birth you know be it siblings or whatever you find yourself in the same room at a time when actually that wouldn't have happened before so i actually think through this time through these moments of kind of 
innovation through these moments of how are we communicating and connecting with each other? Why are we connecting? And people don't always know why they were connecting, but they just knew that they had to reach out for some reason. They it, Maybe that sense of sanctity that they just wanted to connect, even if they didn't know what to say to each other. And technology has been at the heart of that throughout this whole time. So I think that this time has been really interesting for me to just show that the, you know, the interconnectedness and how digital technologies are at the basis of this is just really important for us to keep on top of that conversation. One of the things that we've also been thinking about in this conversation, and very specifically through some of the work that Paul and Rosanna have been doing, is thinking about how some of these technologies can be used to build better futures for people and how the connection that you that you spoke about, Sean, can be used to build collective conversations that's helped to build different futures. Paul, can you say a bit about that? So what I've been working on is is Future Places Toolkit. And um, in fact, that's that that's been more focused really around uh, around using um, digital uh, tools, uh, in our case, particularly um, an augmented reality drawing app uh, to, 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 to get um, more representative people from communities involved and engaged with um, thinking about preferable uh, or better futures for their, for their neighbourhoods. And, and actually that's, that's, that's partly about physical placemaking. So we've been working with architects Stride Triglown, we've been working with um, Noel West um, Media Centre and uh, we've, we've uh, recently done a, a test on film Wood Broadway with um, with uh, members of the community and community organisers there, um, getting people uh, imagining the, the futures that they might want for that uh, particular neighbourhood for for Philwood Broadway, which is currently going through a, a consultation, a, a planning consultation process, um, and really we're we're trying to, uh, to to get people around the table, or in this case, actually get people out on the street uh, with an AR app on their um, mobile on mobile phones uh, imagining better futures for their neighborhood and using using um, AR what happens is as they describe um, these preferable futures they they get to see drawings of what they imagine uh, appear layered over the contemporary architecture so this is a, a digital layer that appears immediately um, and enables people to to see the futures that they imagine and I guess what we're trying to do that with that really is um, is enable people to see themselves um, to visualize themselves in in uh, these alternative futures um, futures that might be preferable for for them and for their their neighborhood and for their communities and also in a way to write themselves into the science fiction stories um, or or the the, the, the the real stories that are being told um, the real plans that are being made um, for uh, the future of, of their areas so so yeah the the idea is about using um, digital tools to, to engage people, hopefully in kind of entertaining uh, ways, in creative ways, to get people imagining, to do some social imagining um, together, and uh, also hopefully to involve people in um, planning discussions, discussions about the future of their neighbourhoods that maybe they might be um, excluded um, from um, in conventional um, processes. 